Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning and happy Resurrection Day. This is an awesome day. It's a wonderful day. It is Easter, and we're just going to get in the Word today. Today we're talking about remembering the benefits of the blood. Remembering the benefits of the blood. Let me go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day, Lord God, this Resurrection Day that we celebrate, Father God, what you've done for us. Father, I ask this morning that you'll think through my mind, that you'll speak through my vocal cord. I pray, dear Lord God, that it be less of me and more of you. I ask, Father God, that it be none of me and all of you. I give you liberty and freedom to have your way in me today. And I declare that your word will go forth uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let's do what we do. Stretch your hands toward the Bible and say, this is the Bible. It is the word of God. It is the word of faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. My life is better after having heard the word of faith. My ears are open to hear. My heart is ready to manifest the living word of the living God in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Now, stretch your hands toward me if you would say, Father, Father place your anointing on Pastor Henry. Give him, give him a word in due season that will give my life new reason. I declare now that your word will go forth uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Now, the Bible talks about the coming of Jesus uh, from from uh, Old Testament, from the Old Testament through the Old Testament to the New Testament. It talks about the coming of Jesus. Um, and um, there is one particular. Uh, the, the, the foreshadowing of him coming and him being here, here and all that he did while he was on the earth was for one point. We're going to talk about that today. For one specific thing he needed to get done, and we're going to talk about that today, remembering the blood of Jesus. So I want to go back to the very, very beginning <clears throat> when God first talked about what he was going to do. Let's go to Genesis 3, verse 11. Let me read this. Uh, now, this is after Satan, uh, uh, he deceived Eve and she ate of the fruit and she gave to Adam and he ate of the fruit. And, uh, you know, when, when sin really just first got started, <clears throat> and this is the Lord talking. And he said, well, Adam said, he said, where are you, Adam? And he said, I was, I was naked and I was afraid, so I hid myself. And God turned to Adam and said, and he said to him, who told thou, that, who told thou that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree which I commanded thou thou should not eat? And he's uh, talking to Eve. And she said, uh, he said, this woman you gave me, she gave me the tree and I did eat. <clears throat> and the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this thou have done? And this woman said, the serpent beguiled me or he tricked me and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle of the field. And upon thy belly shall thou go, and, and the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity or an enemy between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let me say that again. It shall bruise thy head. What shall bruise thy head? What I'm going to put this thing in me, I'm going to put between you and the woman. It's going to bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, what was God saying? See, God didn't have, <clears throat> he didn't have to try and figure it out. He didn't have to try and say, what am I going to do? My, my man, uh, they, they did this, they sinned. This other. God already knew what he was going to do right there from the very, very beginning. And God said, I'll put this enemy, I'll put this enmity between you and the woman, and it shall bruise thy head. What I'm going to do is going to bruise that head. What does it mean by bruising that head? His forehead? No. Bruise your authority. Mm. It's going to mess up your ability. 
Mm -hmm. It's going to mess up who you are, what you just taken away from man, which is the authority and ability God placed on man. And he said, thou shalt bruise his heel, not its heel, but his heel. Whose heel? Talking about his heels representing the flesh, the flesh of Jesus. And we all know about what happened at the cross. We all know what happened, how Jesus got beat. He got, he got beat down. He got whooped at the cross. He got whooped with a cat of nine tails. He got a crown of thorns put on him. He's got his side pierced in. He was belittled. He was punched. He was spit on. He was put down. I mean, he, was, he, he went through it. Now, I, I googled a picture of Jesus on the cross, and they showed us little, you know, Jesus, and they showed us little blood trickling down on him, and, you know, the, the little prissy-looking picture, but I don't believe that it was like that. <clears throat> I believe it was more like the passion of the cross. Did you ever see the passion of the cross? I believe that it was, it was, he was beat so bad, he was unrecognizable. He was tore up. His skin was flat. It didn't even look human, and we're going to see why. Did he have to go through all this? Why couldn't he just be killed? Why did he have to go through all what he went through at the cross? Why did he have to go through such torture and through such pain and through such agony until he was unrecognizable? He had to do that. He had to do that. And just like God said, he shall bru bruise thy head or thy authority, what? He got him at the core. He got him where it hurts, his ability and his authority. And he said, you shall bruise his heel or his flesh. And he had to get it where it hurt. He had to get it. Uh, he had to get agonizing pain placed on him. So now <clears throat> I want to show you the benefits first. We all know them. I want to go over them. The benefits of what happened at the cross. Let me go to Matthew 26, verse 28. Matthew 26, verse 28. For this is my blood, for this is the blood of my New Testament or my new covenant or my new contract. For this is the blood of my new contract, which is shed for many. Remember, uh, for the remission of sins. Let me say that again. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Can somebody say remission of sins? Remission of sins. For the remission of sins. For the cancellation of sins. For the wiping out of your sins. See, back in the Old Testament, they needed goats and they needed lambs and they needed sheep or whatever it is. They had to shed the blood in order, and the blood would cover the sins over. But Jesus, glory to God, he had what remitting of sins. What he had, he had, uh, 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 he wiped the sin out. He canceled the sin as though it never existed. Said it again, remission of sins. Yes, we're going to come back here. But we're going to deal with this some more. Let's go forward. James 5, 16. Now stick with me now. Stick with me because we're going to dig into this thing. James 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Somebody say righteous. righteous. We became what? Righteous on the, when he was on the cross. He took our sin and made us righteous. Somebody say it again, righteous. Right. What is righteous? Being justified before God, just as if I'd never sinned. He made me in right standing with God. He made you in right standing with God. See, you could not do it on your own, and I could not do it on my own. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how well you act. I don't care how many old ladies you walked across the street. I don't care all the goody-goody things you've done. You can never be good enough to be in right standing with God. Good glory to God. So Jesus, on the cross, he took our sin and he gave us his righteousness because he would never sin and as if we'd never sinned when he made us righteous. Let me keep going. Y'all stick with me now. We're going to dig into this thing deeper. I'm coming back here again. Let's go to... Um, Let's go to James 5.16. Oh, we're just there. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter 2.24. And, um, and when his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live uh, unto righteousness, by his stripes we were healed. Say it with me. Say healed. healed. By his stripes we were healed, glory to God. 
We receive the healing in our bodies by the stripes of Christ Jesus. No longer do you have to walk around with the sickness that the enemy tries to put on you, that, 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 that uh, uh, this world tries to put on you, because on the cross, he took our sickness so that we can have his healing or we can have his health. Glory to God. Don't go nowhere because we're coming back here again. We're going to dig into this thing. We're going to see what really happened on the cross. Let's go forward. Give me um, Galatians 3. Galatians 3, verse 13 through 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. Glory to God. Yes, so he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Because the law was a curse. <coughs> excuse me. The law was a curse unto us. Why is that? We couldn't keep them. And I don't, you know, there, there are some people who won't think they're living by the law. And, you know, I do this because the law says thou shall not kill and thou shall not steal. Place no other gods before thee and so forth and so on. And all the laws and the, 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 uh, the Mosaic laws and whatever laws they're trying to live by. You can't live by the laws because, number one, you don't even know all the laws. There's 613 laws. And if you break one of them, you broke them all. So you can't live by the law. But Jesus, glory to God, hung on the cross and said, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. What did he do on the cross? He took the curse for us. So we don't have to walk in the curse any longer. And not just the curse uh, of the law, but there are other curses out there that he took for us. We're going to deal with that just in just a minute. Let me go forward. That the blessing, somebody say cursed. cursed. Somebody say delivered, delivered. From the curse. From the say it again. Delivered, delivered. From the curse. From the Make it personal. I am, I am. Delivered, delivered. From the curse. From the 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, uh, through, through Jesus Christ, that we, being, uh, that we might receive the promises of the Spirit through faith. Glory to God. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Glory to God. Where did you get blessed? On the cross. Hallelujah. You didn't get a house on the cross. You didn't get a car on the cross, but you got something more valuable. You got the blessing on the cross, and we're going to deal with that in just a minute. And we won't be here long tonight, but we got to break this thing down and really see what happened because we have to remember. First, we have to be remembered. Whatever I mean, we have to be attached to what happened on the cross. That way we can remember what happened on the cross. Glory to God. Now, Let's go forward. We're going to go through this thing again. Let's go to, uh, no, first let me go to Luke 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And, he, and they parted his raiments after, uh, and cast lots. Okay, this is when Jesus was on the cross. When he was on the cross and they were spitting at him, uh, at him and whipping him and doing this to him, and doing that to him, he turned around and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Glory to God. They might not have known what, he, what they were doing, but God knew what they was doing, and God knew what they was going to be doing way back in Genesis. Glory to God. Genesis 3, when he said, He shall bruise thy head, and you shall bruise his heel, or he shall bruise your authority, and you're going to bruise his flesh. God knew what they were doing, even though they didn't know what they were doing. And let me tell you something, people of God, you need to know what they were doing, and I need to know what they were doing, so we can take full advantage of what they were doing, even if they didn't know what they were doing. So we're going to go through this thing, we're going to figure out what they were doing on, at the cross. Let's go. James 5.16 Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. Somebody say righteous. righteous. Somebody say it again. Say righteous. righteous. Glory to God. How do we become righteous? Was it just as easy as believing? Oh, yes, it was just as easy as believing 
for you and for me. But it was not that easy for Jesus, glory to God. Because back in the Old Testament, a lamb had to be killed. Back in the Old Testament, a, 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 a goat had to be killed. An animal had to be killed, glory to God. And Jesus had to be killed to make us righteous. There was no other way for us to become righteous. He had to be killed. His blood had to be shed in the earth, hallelujah, to make you righteous, glory to God. He did not come to die just to, for dying's sake. He came to die for righteousness sake because what he had, he wanted us to have it. He had what? A right standing with God. And he wanted us to have what? A right standing with God. And for us to have what he had, he had to give up what he had so we can get what he had. He had to give up his right standing with God. He had to give up being justified with God. He said, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Oh, why did he forsake God? Because why did God forsake Jesus so he wouldn't have to forsake you? Glory to God. And so God, he took on your sin and God forsook him so he never has to forsake you. He can always be right by your side, glory to God. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you because he took, forsook his son so he don't have to forsake us. So he doesn't have to forsake us. Praise God. Praise God. So his blood had to be shed. Only by the blood of Jesus you were made righteous. Only by the blood of the Lamb you were made righteous. Glory to God. Only when he gave up the ghost, glory to God, he made us righteous. He made us righteous. He made us righteous. Now, let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. We won't be here long. Now watch this. Confess your... Confess your faults one to another. Hold on. Hold on one second. Okay. Come on. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by his stripes ye were healed. Let me say that again. By his stripes ye were healed. Glory to God. Now, I don't want you, and you need to get the picture of what happened. I said this thing was more like passion of the Christ. Glory to God. See, when he was on that cross, you know what I mean? First thing they did was they gave him what? A crown of thorns on his head. And let me tell you something, people, in the name of Jesus. We're going to deal with the cross. We're going to deal with, we're going to come back to the cross. We're going to come back to the crown. Let's go to the, to the, to the stripes. With, with, with the stripes, glory to God. They whipped him, glory to God, with those stripes. It was a cat of nine tails. It was a whip. We had glass in it. And when they would whip him, the glass would dig into his skin and they pull it back and rip his skin open. What happened? And blood hit to trickle down. That blood was trickling down in the body. That blood was trickling down to the earth and they whipped him on his back. So you can have, uh, you can, don't have to be burdened down with back pain, with stuff going on in your back. And they whipped him, glory to God, on his front, glory to God. So why? So you can walk and be free and put on the shield of faith over your front. In the name of Jesus, they whipped him on his side so God can be by your side. They pierced him in his side so he would never, God would never leave you or forsake you, but he'd always be by right your side. Because when they whipped and they pierced him on his side, that blood trickled down by his side. When they whipped him on his back, that blood trickled down from his back. When they whipped him in his front, that blood trickled down from his front. The blood, the blood, they had to draw the blood. They didn't know what they was doing. They thought they were just punishing him, but what they was doing was releasing us, glory to God, so that we don't have to walk around burdened down with pain, burdened down with sickness, burdened down. They had him on a cross, and he had to, he had to come up to breathe because when he's down like this, he couldn't expand his lungs. So he had to come up to breathe. Why do you have to come up to breathe? So you can have free freedom in your bronchial system. So you can have free lungs to breathe. So all that uh, bronchitis and all that mess has no right on you. Why is that? Because Jesus took everything so that you don't have to have anything in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How? By the blood that he shed. By the blood, people of God. It's the blood. It's the blood. Yeah, we healed by his stripes. But the stripes, glory to God, what did it do? It drew blood. That's what it did. 
it drew blood. And I don't know what kind of manner of sickness that might have tried to attack itself to your body, but it doesn't have a right to be there. Why? Because Jesus took it so you can get rid of it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's go to Matthew 28. We won't be here long. Matthew 28, verse, 20, verse 26, 26. Matthew 26, verse 28. For this is the blood of my new testament or my new covenant, covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin, for the cancellation of sin, for the cancellation of sin. He canceled the sin. So now, for this blood is, a, is, the, uh, is the blood of his new covenant to cancel your sin. Not only did it cancel your sin, but it made you a king. Glory to God. It made you a queen. You see, he put that crown of thorns on his head. And when that crown of thorns got on his head, I don't believe it just sat there. I believe it pierced his skin. I believe it pierced his forehead. And it passed around his head. And the blood trickled down. Mm -hmm. that blood trickled down his face and that blood trickled down his eyes it got in his eyes because he couldn't wipe it off it got in his eyes so you can have good vision so your eyes can be right so your eyes can be in right standing he took it in his eyes so your eyes can work right he got blood in his ears why is that so your hearing can be like God intended for it to be those with hearing problem you don't have to write you don't have that problem needs to get off of you why is that because that blood went in his ears so that you may hear glory to God. And the blood trickled down and into his mouth. Why is that? So you can speak the living word of the living God and have freedom of speech in the name of Jesus, glory to God. And that blood had to go up in his nose as it came down. And he breathed in. The blood went in his nose. Why is that? So you can have a, uh, you can breathe the living word of the living God. So your bronchial system, so your lung system, so all your, your, your uh, respiratory system can be healed in the name of Jesus. What has healed your, 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 your respiratory system? The blood of Jesus. What is healing your eyes? By the blood of Jesus. What is going to heal your ears? The blood of Jesus. What's going to heal your speech? and your tongue, and your mouth. The blood of Jesus, glory to God. They didn't know what they was doing, but God knew what they was doing, and we need to know what they was doing so we could take advantage of what he did, glory to God. Remember the blood. Remember the blood. Remember the blood, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm almost finished. Let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians. Okay. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Yes, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, from the Mosaic curses or uh, whatever curses, the uh, Old Testament curses, Levitica, Leviticus curse, Leviticus, all the curses. He redeemed us from those curses. But not only that, he redeemed you from other curses so nobody can put a curse on you. So no witchcraft or no black magic or no voodoo can work on you. Why is that? Because cursed is he who hung it on the tree. So if anybody ever tried to put anything on you, guess what? Glory to God. Jesus took it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And not only did he take that curse from you, but he gave you something in return for the curse. He gave you something in return for the curse. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Jews, might come on the Gentiles. No, let me go ahead. Now, so watch this. Now, let me go here first. When he put the, he took the curse from you, right? Not only did he take the curse from you, what? But he gave you a crown, that crown of thorns. He gave you a crown. So now what? You're a king's kid, glory to God. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation, glory to God. You are just like the living God. He made you in his image, and he made you in his likeness. And that blood brought you back just like him. And that blood made you again just like him, glory to God. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the the, uh, 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 the crown of thorns. Thank God, glory to God, because that's what made you a king's kid when he, by what he did on that cross, by the blood, by the blood, by the blood. 
Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. It's on us right now. Glory to God. How did that happen? When he made you righteous, you, be, you were open to the blessing. When he made you a, a royal priesthood, you were open to the blessing. When he made you a king's kid, you were open to the blessing. Glory to God. Open for the blessing. What's the blessing? He didn't give you any house. He didn't give you any car. He didn't give you any money. But what he gave you is access. Glory to God. He gave you what? His power. He gave you what? His authority. He gave you what? His name. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Glory to God. That Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. How do I give God glory when the blessing is on me? When things work out for my benefit. When things work out for my family. When things work out for my finances. When things work out. Glory to God. What is that? That's the blessing. See, the blessing is not the house. It's me having the ability to get the house. The blessing is not the car. It's that I have the ability to get the car. That's the blessing because the blessing is an enablement. It's an ability that gets on your ability and gives you ability like you never had before. The blessing of Abraham is on us. The curse is over, over us. Don't you let that devil tell you there's a curse on you. Don't you let that devil tell you there's a generational curse. Don't you let that devil tell you any foolishness. Why is that? Because you are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, and you're blessed like, like Abraham. And he said, I'll bless those that bless you and curse them that curse you. Now, he might not curse them, but they step into the curse on their own. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for the cross. We thank God for what happened at the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for what you endured for us by your blood. By your blood. Let me end it here. Exodus 12, verse 13. Exodus 12, verse 13. It's my last verse. And the blood shall be unto you a token upon the houses where you are, where you are. The token shall, the blood shall be as a token on the houses where you are. And when I shall see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not come not upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. People of God, the land of Egypt is all those wicked things that are out there. And he said the blood should be like a door, like when they put the blood on the doorposts. So, Jesus, so, so the angels would pass over. People of God, you take the blood and you apply it to your life. Apply the blood symbolically to your health. Apply the blood symbolically to your children. Apply the blood symbolically to where it is you're living. So when destruction comes, the destroyer will pass over you and the enemy will be rebuked for your sake. People of God, I pray you got something on that today. We have to remember what the blood has done. Oh, yes, we need to pray. Oh, yes, we need to praise. Oh, yes, we need to uh, uh, watch the services and go to church or whatever it is that we do to get the word. Yes, we need to read our Bibles. But we also need to remember the blood. People of God, don't go anywhere because we're going to have communion. So quickly get yourself a piece of bread or a cracker, a little juice or a little water. I don't care what it is. Get some because we're going to remember what he did for us at the cross. But before we go there, let me go ahead and give people an opportunity to join us. Those who don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. You've got to be in right standing with God. Say, Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. 
Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. And thank you for saving me from sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me have communion elements, please. Come on. Praise God. So you go ahead and get your communion elements together. If it's a piece of bread, if it's a cracker, whatever it may be, let's get ready to honor God for what he's done for us. The Bible says in Corinthians, I believe it's Corinthians 11, could be verse 23, he says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, we remember the stripes that you took for us. Remember how you carried the cross for us. How you allowed yourself to be nailed to the cross. I need to say this, but I didn't say in my, in my sermon. He took the nails in his hands or his wrist representing his hands so that whatever you put your hands to can prosper. He took the nails and his ankles representing his feet so whatever you tread, you can possess the land. He took it for us. And by his stripes, we are healed. You may eat. Okay, let's go ahead and take of the blood. Father, we recognize that all that was done, all that you went through was to access the blood, that the blood may shed into the earth and make us right with you. We remember that and we thank you for the blood. You may drink. Praise God. People of God, we are, for all he did for us, we need to be thankful. He gave himself for us. That was the best gift he could have given for us. And we can't take that lightly. We can't take that for granted. But we got to steam it on high. It's a privilege, it's an honor, and it's a gift. The sacrifice of Jesus. And it's time for us to make a sacrifice. We need to sacrifice our finances to keep the king, kingdom of God going strong. Sacrifice our finances so we can give God glory. Because when we give to God, God's going to make sure that you have what you need. These are times of trouble, tough times. There are people going through, I mean, there are stories. I mean, I'm going through. There are stories and things that I hear. It really saddens me. Most things that are in common is people that don't give. He said a rebuke to devour for your, on your behalf. Now, it doesn't mean the devourer is not going to show up. It just means he's not going to show out. So people of God, as a thank you to what God has done for us, you need to sow. Sow into this ministry, sow into this word, sow into the kingdom of God. We have several ways you can do that. We have Cash App. Our Cash App is the dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, then ministries with a capital M. One more time, dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, with, uh, and ministries with a capital M. Or you can call us and give us by phone at 770-477-8586. 770-477-8586. Last but not least, you can mail us a check. Make it out to WFCM, P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 
302-237. One more time, WFCM, P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. People of God, we love you. We thank God for you. And don't forget to remember the blood of Jesus. You have a blessed week.